Okay, some movement here with three minutes remaining. And John, an easy decision to use his priority. And the pressure is on here. A little sticky on the first turn, but now has some speed to work with as he hammers down the line. Let's see what he goes for. And he goes to the reverse. His back foot slips off. And he goes down. Jordy Smith. He'll be relieved. Okay, now Jordy just saw that John fell. So he is going to paddle as hard as he can to uh, utilize his priority and try to block John from getting the score he needs in the last two minutes. Well, that stings. It was a hard section to come off. Even though there's that wind puffing at the moment, Ross, it just feels like the waves are a little flat to go to the air. Yeah, that high tide gives it... Um, just a kind of a heavy water and it, it, a lot of the times it pushes your airs out into the flat it's always tough to handle that landing Jordy is going to be forced to go in this wave because you know John's going to paddle for it well Jordy I don't think he's in a position to get it it's moving through to the inside a minute and 40 seconds to go John he has a chance here but he's got to get going this way starting to reel off and he will take to the air a big frontside air reverse he sticks it He's only chasing a 5.94, and we haven't seen a lot of highlight moments in this heat. Geordie was a little far out for that one. Wow. And with just over a minute to go, John Florence proves just how dangerous he can be. Only needed that one section and stomped a big one. Well, definitely the, the most technical and difficult maneuver done in this heat, but you'd have to think Jordy's still going to have another chance to get a score. So for John, he needs to get back into the lineup. Well, how high will the judges go on that air? We'll find out in a moment, but Jordy's out there. And there is a set coming his way. We mentioned it earlier, he always has faith that J-Bay will deliver. And it turns up for the South African once again. And he is just flowing down the line. He knows he doesn't need much to improve his heat score total. He's going to pull through the back of this one. Meanwhile, John Florence, he's pushing wide. There's another wave in this set. He's down the line. He's having a look at it. The score in, a 7.33. He took the lead. And now he needs a backup. There's only 15 seconds to go. A tidy floater to start this right off. And now he tries to stick the finish. He does that. Didn't quite get on top of that last section, though. It won't be a huge score. And we're waiting to see what Jordy put away. And we will be waiting for the result. But what a finish to a, a very sleepy heat. One of the strangest heats I've ever watched at J-Bay. Um, you know, this did not unfold for either of these surfers the way they wished. So, um, again, the judges rewarding progression for John with that big air reverse with the 7.3. Um, Jordy, just a couple of okay turns here, no real mistakes, but trying to link together uh, a backup score. So he's got the 6.3. This is the wave at stake right now for the backup score. So to me, it looks average. You know, like I think he will get that 3.84. But then John, in the last 15 seconds, gets this wave. Um, so a much diff more difficult wave to surf. A floater, but kind of a risky floater because the, the section was so critical and then a climb. So not that great of a wave, but John, keep in mind, also getting rid of a very low score of a 2.83. These competitors might be tired. I don't think John's wave was anything special, that last ride, but keep in mind, Jordy Smith's got to make up a point on the open, on the strongest exchange. 7.33 to 6.33. Okay, 4.17, Ronnie. So now John's going to need at least a 3.17 to turn the heat on those two little maneuvers on that big wave. I feel like he's going to get it. That floater was done. You know, it's just a floater, but it was done in a very critical section. This is, this is painful. They have to take that into consideration. You know, again, it's just a floater, but the wave was way overhead. Let's take another look at it from a different angle. Watch him get airborne off the, the floater. So, again, that just shows you that the bottom dropped out underneath him. And then got one more maneuver in there and finished it off. So, it's going to be so touch and go. Judges watching a replay, and uh, this is going to be the tightest heat ever. As you mentioned, <laughs> kind of hard to disagree. It might be tied. 
in which case John Florence would get the win with the single highest score, the 7.33. But the judges reviewing what what exactly what unfolded in the last exchange. Well, in my eyes, no doubt, Jordy's backup score was better. Uh, and they already dropped that with a 4.17. But again, you called it. He has the higher first score, the 7.3. Well, the score's falling into place now. On his last wave, John Florence puts away a 3.37 wow. when he needed a 3.17. World titles are about overcoming tough situations like that. And John does just enough to get the victory. Geordie Smith, he will be salty. He will be devastated. This is his favourite event on the schedule. And have a look at the heat score totals. How close was it? <laughs> incredible and you know it came down to progression and being aggressive and attacking john fell a couple times but he stuck to the air that gave him the edge with that 7.3 and just barely beat jordy who uh, was sticking to the water and just trying to connect the dots with uh, more of a traditional surfing and paid the price for it well now after four head-to-head -head heats the ledger is even between jordy smith and john florence john getting the jump on jordy in his strongest contest on the schedule in, well, what could have been a very forgettable heat was somewhat memorable in the final stages. That's um, exactly right. It was uh, kind of a funny heat. Both guys made a lot of mistakes. Uh, the waves were, were pretty forgettable as well, so it was always going to be tough, but uh, again, very funky heat. What a finish. Rosie Hodge, what did you make of it? That was so intense, and like you just said, bizarre is just the word of the day. I mean, the way the waves were pumping through this morning, and then that heat, Kieran, obviously slowed down. You know, what's the decision from the commissioner's office? Will we see competition, you know, keep going? It's tough out there. I mean, we really did kind of see something we weren't expecting this morning, and it was looking great out there. Everyone was really keen. Right now, we've just seen this, the ocean kind of shut down. That wind's really blowing in now, strengthening up from the side. So. We're going to actually call it. We're going to go off and uh, and come back and reassess tomorrow. Kind of forecast is looking interesting for the next week. There may be some potential near the end, and uh, I think it's probably going to end up better than what we've got. Well, I'm interested to hear what Joe and Pete have to say about that last heat, so I'm going to throw it down to the host set. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rosie and oh, Jim Perot, Commissioner, making a tough call this morning because we saw some really rippable conditions in the free surf. And they were like, okay, let's get this thing underway. We saw the great waves. We saw Mick get a couple of nines in the dark. Next thing you know, the ocean goes flat. We get a restart in one of the heats that we we're waiting for with John John Florence and Jordy Smith. And then what a close decision. Last couple of minutes of that heat were maybe the most dramatic we've seen of the year so far, Pete. And, of course, for how slow um, and sleepy it was for the first 40 minutes. Um, what a finish. I mean, that was exciting. I mean, I was sweating. I had, uh, you know, my palms were, were itchy. It was uh, one of those amazing finishes. And, and again, I mean, Ronnie and, and Ross up there in the booth, they couldn't really even decipher who won that heat. And uh, it came down to, uh, you know, incremental pieces of a point. Um, so exciting. Uh, but I feel for these guys because they really didn't get to perform to what um, they wanted to and potential wise, um, but it still was exciting. And John John had to adapt using that air game to a secret weapon in these conditions. As we look at the heat recap, this one started off first thing in the morning to the biggest names in pro surfing. Smith, a two time J Bay Open champ, has been looking so solid throughout this contest, and he had a solid lead in the beginning just by getting the 6 3 3. That sounded like a gigantic number at this point of the day. It, it sure did. And, and you remember in the beginning of this heat, we had a restart, right? So um, they were way up the point. There was actually a set that kind of came down that actually had potential, but they were way up top. And then finally, you see at the uh, midway mark, or I'm sorry, this was the last five minutes, you know, um, that's when the heat started. You know, there was a string of waves. This air right here really decided it. You know, it was a 7 3 3. He was able to get the final move on it. You know, good score there. It was a point higher than Jordy's wave. I mean, and then just to have this play out in the very last seconds with a set at the end, you know, this four point ride, and it comes down to backup scores. I mean, so crazy. We talk about. You know, what we do, a marketing slogan of we can't script this, and you can't. And that's what the ocean brings. That's why it's so exciting. Unpredictable nature of the rhythm of the ocean is a crazy one here at Jeffries Bay. Just one heat run, a quarterfinal with John John Florence and Jordy Smith coming down to the beach to make the decision. And the local favorite upset 
Out is Local Wave, who have a former two-time JBA Open champ out of the contest in really challenging conditions. And Florence, world number three, moves on to his first semifinal here in South Africa. It's a dramatic morning here in JBay. We'll hear from John John Florence and Jordy Smith right after this quick break. Stay with us. Interesting Sunday morning here at the J-Bay Open. We went one heat. John John Florence and Jordy Smith in the contest is called off of the day as we wait for better conditions later on in the waiting period. Joe Tappel alongside former Big Wave World champ Pete Mel. What an interesting morning. It's rare that you have one heat run and then you call it off for the day, except when you come to J-Bay. We've had some short days here in the past. Conditions looked really ideal earlier this morning, and hopefully we'll get better conditions because we know how important this is for the world title race. Pete, think about John getting that score. Now into the semifinals, he's got Tahiti coming up on the calendar, lowers where he's finaled before. He's been the champ in France. Things are really looking good for the Hawaiian now with that close victory. You know, and Wilco's on hand too, and um, you know, Matt Wilkinson was probably watching that one really closely, and uh, was like, uh, kind of rubbing his hands together when he saw for the first 50 minutes, and you know, the 6-3-3 of Jordy, it looked like it was going to be Jordy's uh, morning, um, and then, you know, there's that five minutes of fame for John John Florence, and it came for him, and uh, you know, those are the kind of things that happen when you get momentum shifts, and again, that's why we're so drawn to this sport, and to watching competitive surfing, and uh, it was exciting. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what's going to unfold for the uh, rest of this waiting period. It, that's a real kind of um, roll of the dice as well. It's, it doesn't look positive. There is opportunities, but the winds look weird, and then all of a sudden you've got the end of the waiting period. There's a swell that may or may not be there because it's a forecast, so it's, um, it's, been, a, it's been a funny day. Very interesting day, as we know, an important heat for John for the world title race, but also for Jordy Smith since he was inside that top ten picture. An unfortunate loss for the local as we will catch up with Jordy Smith with Rosie Hodge. Well, Jordy, pretty much all of us are baffled by that heat. I mean, the conditions, pumping before your heat, and then just seemed to someone flick the switch. I mean, what are your initial reaction to that heat? Overscore on his last wave, pretty much. Um, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, the conditions definitely aren't the best. Um, everyone knew the wind was going to come up, but they decided to run. There were some waves before, but um, you know the charts show that it's going to get more and more uh, windy throughout the day. So um, yeah, kindness is off. Unfortunately, these kind of things happen, and uh, yeah, you can't really do too much about them. Eh? End of the day, it's up to them. You just got to go out there and surf. And you have actually watched that, that replay on the big screen. So like you said, you've digested that and taken that all in. So your opinion? I mean, what do you do with that now? 
Uh, there's not really much I can do. Uh, it's not up to me. It's up to those five guys. So uh, they make the decision at the end of the day. Just super bummed out. Uh, would have liked to have had some clean open walls for sure, and a, you know, kind of a good better battle. But um, that's why we love surfing for these kind of reasons, you know. Um, yeah, I just got to. Hopefully, I can get the bump on the next one. All right, Jordy. Thank you for your time. A very disappointed Jordy Smith out of the contest with the quarterfinal results. Not happy with the decision on the score on the last decision. As Ronnie and Ross were talking upstairs, they were almost like, this is a tie. It was that close of a call on that last decision for Florence, getting the score on that two-turn combination. When you look at the whole outcome of the heat and look at all the waves, John used that air game. He got a pretty big punt in that matchup to get the high single wave score, which was really made the big difference in the outcome. Sure did, you know, and I think if you're going to look at the whole heat in general, I mean, that was the highlight. So, I mean, he got the heat win. Um, again, he, he clearly disappointed for Jordy Smith. And, you know, he wasn't down here this morning to, you know, I think he was just kind of just going to focus on his own game and not be part of the decision and just go with the flow. And I think that that's some way of dealing with all of this, too. If you get too involved in a decision and you get distracted from what you really need to do is just go out and surf. And Jordy took the right road. I think he was on a, a, a good plane. Everything was, seemed like it was going to work out for him except for that last five minutes. It's always tough to hear that painful side. You feel for Jordy Smith in the top ten picture, former champ here at Jay Bay, but now going to the other side, surviving a heat like that and getting into the semifinals has to feel really solid for John John Florence. Florence is with Rosie Hodge. Well, John, we've been saying the entire time that was such a crazy heat, but when we look back at the end of this year and we think about the world title implications, do you think this is one of those scenarios that you'll be looking and just be so happy that it tipped in your favor? Um, yeah, for sure. You know, just that last wave, just, I don't know, everything was so close in that heat. It didn't paddle out. We, when we paddled out, I was kind of expecting it to be bombing. It was before the comp started, there was just set after set after set, and so I think we both kind of waited thinking that those sets were going to come in, and, you know, we had one restart, and then we would have had another restart if I didn't gone those like little bad ones but um, it's definitely gotten smaller the swell and just kind of need to learn to adjust to that and stoked I made it through that that was a scary heat. And let's just talk about that heat I mean you guys started up it seemed like no one wanted to give up the inside position then the wave just went completely flat so just talk us through that whole scenario. Yeah in the beginning we were just kind of battling each other way up top and um, like I said though I just kept thinking there was going to be sets the whole time and then you know, we've eventually kind of got into the rhythm of the heat, and it was just so slow. And the, there was a lot of mid-sized ones coming, but I don't know. I, to uh, so myself, I thought I kept thinking, I'm like, okay, there's going to be a bomb. There's going to be a bomb. I just want to be on that set. And he got that one real nice wave, and then, so that's all I kept thinking. And then four minutes came, came down to four minutes. I was like, oh, God, I just got to go on anything now. And another thing, I mean, you guys are so confident you guys can do big airs at the drop of the hat, but it almost seems as soon as it gets that stressful situation, you almost don't even have faith in a floater. Yeah, you know, it's pretty it's pretty scary in those last couple of minutes because you just start overthinking things a lot. And um, I don't know, I just got to those two last ones real quick and got that mid-sized one and did an air. And then the last one, I just did a floater and then like a snap. And um, so stoked to get a 3.1. That was my favorite 3.1 I ever got. <laughs> and semifinals now, I mean, you must be feeling pretty confident. You throw that heat away and just kind of... Be positive for the next couple rounds? Yes, definitely. Just be positive, be happy. I'm still in it and um, just kind of adjust everything to the conditions are changing, the wind's coming on, and as well as dropping. All right, John, thanks for your time. Well done. Thank you very much, Rosie Hodge. And great to hear from John John Florence reacting to a very close decision against Jordy Smith here at Jeffries Bay as he moves on into the semifinals. But I love the way Rosie put that. You don't even have faith in a floater sometimes. That's the truth, A right? routine maneuver for a guy like John and Jordy. And it was that close. It was that dramatic. A very sleepy morning where everyone was sort of like stirring during the restart. And then everybody was on their feet watching that final exchange. Beat. Yeah, and it was a stark contrast from his interview this morning, right? His interview this morning was he, he was definitely a little sleepy and, and questionable, but um, as soon as the adrenaline kicked in and you, know, you get that heat win in such a dramatic fashion, John John was a whole different human. Uh, and that's why I think you know we get so attached to just surfing in general because uh, it can change your moods pretty quickly. Seeing John John Florence in that first semifinal, he'll be met by the winner of quarterfinal number two, 11-time world champ Kelly Slater will take on Josh Kerr later on in the waiting period. 
Julian Wilson has an all-star matchup with former world champ Gabriel Medina. Three-time world champ fanning with Felipe Toledo. Still some heavy heat to look forward to, and we're hoping that we'll get some really solid conditions. It was really interesting before we called it off this morning. Josh Kerr was ready to go. He, oh, yeah. he, he was ready out. to surf that heat. Yeah. This is air win for him. He would have had a blast out there. The majority of the feeling of the rest of the surfers in the draw was, let's try to wait for better waves. And you know what? Like, we could show up tomorrow morning, and it could be on. So that's literally how um, trippy and wild and woolly this place is. So uh, we'll be here at 6.30 in the morning for our call time and 7.30 Dawn Patrol. We may have per pumping surf. That's right. Well, Positive that's, Pete. That's, I like your positivity, Peter. <laughs> let's uh, check out the surf line forecast and see if you can get even more positive as we roll through the maps here. Well, look at just the waves of red. You know, that's um, why it's so wild down here. And we don't really have um, any buoys that really to speak of. And, um, you know, it's a place that you get so much dynamics with warm water, cold water, warm weather, cold weather. Winds come up and back off. And the forecast after like three days out changes so quickly. You know, today is supposed to hold through, um, you know, about this afternoon. And, you know, this is what happens when you get that lower interval, when it drops like that, the consistency backs off, um, you know, and then you go looking through here, we got that Wednesday, Thursday bump again, again, forecasting the winds to be a little bit funky, but that's also three days out. So that could change just as quickly. Looking at those maps at Jeffrey's Bay and comparing to the other stops on tour that you always are diving into the forecast, is this one of the harder places to predict swell? Oh, absolutely. You know, the South Atlantic in general, because you, you've got South America and it dips all the way down into and to Antarctica, that little gap there, that just, uh, you know, that water feeds off of warm weather coming off of Brazil. So yes, it is uh, one of the most dynamic climate regions in the world, you know, and that's why it's so, you get such big energy too, you know, and, um, you know, going into the Indian Ocean, you, you've got that whole dynamic as well. And uh, yeah, it is it's a tough place to, to forecast. And the good news is we do have plenty of time. A lot of things can change, like Pete was saying. Maybe we'll be on tomorrow. We already finished the first quarter final. John John Florence is in that first semifinal, and he'll be met by the winner of quarter number two. 11-time world champ Kelly Slater has found that winning feeling, and he's taking on Josh Kerr when the J-Bay Open continues. Let's get excited for that matchup, and we'll see you bright and early tomorrow for Don Patrol. Take care. Oscar looking for something big down the line. Oh, Reaching for the stale fish. Kelly Slide on in the barrel. Beautiful speed, power, and flow. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.